What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Ansel Armstrong, back again today. We're going to be talking about a new aspect of MLB The Show 21 that can be a little confusing, both the new players and returning players. We're talking about pinpoint pitching. Welcome to our pinpoint pitching tutorial. I've had a lot of people come through our live streams, link down in the description below, saying, Ants, do your accuracy is like actually pretty solid with the pinpoint pitching. I've been practicing with it a ton like a ridiculous amount so i feel like for the most part i have pinpoint pitching down so let me explain it to you let me walk through my process of practicing with it getting to learn it and how i can be more accurate with my pitches because honestly the game itself doesn't do an incredible job at actually explaining specifically what you need to be doing with pinpoint pitching all right so the first thing we are going to do is access our custom practice mode if you're here in the main menu you just want to scroll all the way down here to custom practice doesn't matter what teams use for this we're going to be using the mets uh so we'll use jacob de grom our opponent doesn't matter because we're not going to have an opponent yet at this point let's go to the cornfield let's go to the field of dreams here and since i was already practicing beforehand we're in pitching but if you need to change you go in here to practice type batting pitching team practice what do we want to do we're not going to have a batter up yet but let's walk through what is pinpoint pitching how to use it so it's kind of a three-part system right uh let's start with a fastball here we'll just select that um, and as you can see, we have a line in our screen so with a circle surrounding it. And we have this white ball that's kind of moving up and down. So the first thing you're going to want to do is follow and trace that line for a fastball. It's simply down from the middle all the way back up to the top and then down again. Another aspect that I see a lot of people getting confused on that, again, isn't very described anywhere. The, the pacing of the ball, how it's moving down and up and how fast that is that is the pace you need to be following so uh what you don't want to do is just slam it down then back up and that was 52 percent accuracy but um you don't want to just be slinging it around because we can be more accurate with that same you don't want to be super slow because in 20 percent accurate right you don't want to be too slow you don't want to be too fast we want to be this perfect nice smooth up and down right up there 84 percent accurate we can do better than that but pretty accurate right there and that's kind of that first key that's that accuracy rating that is going to change with every pitch we do so we can see here with the slider we're going to bring it around 100 percent accurate on the pitch can we get it perfect no we cannot we cannot get it perfect but you can see the 100 percent accuracy there change up is a different motion everyone in the game is every pitch in the game i should say is going to have that different motion that you're going to be following and so you're going to need to get those motions down get the timing and pacing down of it we can see here i pretty much have degrom's timing out of the stretch down right now because we're kind of getting these 100 percent accurates all over the place there's an 80 percent right there that's the first aspect of it you need to get that aspect down otherwise your pitches aren't going to go really anywhere close to where you're wanting them now aspect number two that we're looking at is going to be the timing of coming back down i see a lot of people doing one of these right here you know they throw it up and then they bring it back down just like that and you think oh that was a great pitch why is it way up there as you can see on that feedback way too early right so one thing we're going to be looking notice how as i bring it down and then back up we're going to have a little cogs appear right around this bottom circle see how they're appearing right now they're going to start closing in whenever they close in fully that's when we want to bring our pitch down right so we're going to go down up we're going to follow that pace whenever those gears close back in fully we're going to bring it back down slightly late but overall that was a pretty solid pitch uh generally speaking right let's see one more time here boom pretty much right where we wanted it now one thing i have noticed is that the timing on this downward motion honestly seems to be one of the most important aspects of pitching uh i've had if you can you can you know let's see here if we have a hundred percent accurate pitch that goes right where we want it but our timing's bad goes nowhere close to where we wanted it um, whereas you can have very inaccurate pitches, right? With good timing and it goes somewhat to where you want it. So that timing is crucial. That's probably the most important thing I'd focus on right out the gate. Get that timing down, right? You want that timing down all as early on that one. Otherwise it would have been a perfect pitch there. Let's see if we can get one right here, right? 84% accurate, get the timing together. A little bit early on it but overall not a bad pitch now the last motion we're working with this one's probably the most self-explanatory right but that little dot that shows up at the bottom we want to bring our analog stick towards that dot right so if it's too over to the left just a little bit 
we're going to bring it over to the left as well. Now, one little pro tip about this is that let's say we're throwing a slider. Um, actually, let's do let's do an inside fastball, right? And we really want it inside. That could be this right here can be a little bit of a tough motion to get down because you're really having to jerk the stick a lot from that middle point, right? If we want to really get it inside here. I can go up to the start and then I can move it over here to the to the right a little bit. And then that makes it a much easier trajectory. And boom, we hit the perfect pitch, right? Let's look at that again. I can bring it up and then I can move it over. This does not affect my accuracy. And that makes it a lot easier for me to get that pitch over to the right. If I started up just a little bit to the left, that's a much easier trajectory for me versus coming from the middle. Personal preference there, but uh, I found that is something I felt. Same with on like outside pitches. You know, we can bring it around here. Then I'll just bring it back a little bit and then we can dot it down and boom, you get a perfect pitch just slightly late, a little to the left, but overall a perfect pitch. And that went essentially right where we wanted it, right? If we're wanting a way slider, we want it to dot up right in that spot. Now I'm gonna turn the hand cam on for a couple so you can see just what it looks like from my perspective, right? So just smoothly down and up. And then we're gonna bring it on over. We got the curveball here. We'll look at one of these right get it around that edge and then boom down pretty good pitch overall now another aspect of this that we haven't touched on yet is as i select this slider here you'll see a little shadow right around the edge of the ball that is your perfect accuracy region so essentially what that shadow is saying is if you throw a perfect pitch a perfect perfect pitch right it will go somewhere within the vicinity of that shadow so if i'm wanting to put it here right and i throw a perfect pitch it could still end up right there so if i know i want this to have no chance to be a strike i want to get it down to right there and then i will also have to now throw a perfect pitch to guarantee that it doesn't end up in that zone we get a little bit early it goes a bit where we don't want it to be but you understand the point now those are different per pitch right each pitcher will have a different shadow around their pitches and each pitch will be different as well so with the ground for example take a look at this fastball that's pretty small right we'll bring it out here to the sand so you can see it that's a pretty small shadow we're working with. However, let's choose that with his two seamer, a little bit bigger. And then something like his curveball, obviously a really big region, right? So there's a lot of a lot of room to miss with his curveball. His individual control, his individual pitch controls on his curveball is not as good. So if I want to guarantee that's not a strike, I got to get it all the way down there. And then of course, once again, throw the perfect pitch. We did it there, but we had it down, it ended up up ended up being a really good pitch on that front so keep that in mind as you're positioning your pitches as well that um that accuracy region can help you make sure you're locating at a good point another thing to note is that you will miss based off of your pulling down at the end right you'll miss in that direction so let's say i'm throwing in this up and in fastball and the last thing i want to do is have it creep over the middle and give up a home run because we all know that's going to happen right what i'm going to do is make sure i oversell just a little bit on the right here that way i know it's not going to creep on over then we get the perfect pitch from that point right same opposite with a with an away slider i want to make sure this has no chance of ending back up over here so even if i don't end up with a perfect perfect pitch we're going to come in here bring that down and around and i'm just going to make sure i tail a little bit to the left obviously i want to get a perfect one but if i miss right if i miss on my accuracy down here at the bottom i want to make sure it's to the left that way it's going to end up outside versus it but let's say for example we're throwing this away slider end up missing a little bit to the right here what's it going to do it's going to end up to the right we don't want that to happen so you have a lot of control over your pitches with pinpoint pitching which is one of the aspects i like a ton right now I, I I have control, right? If I want to make sure this slider again has no shot, I'm just gonna line it up a little bit to the left. We're dying that slider all day long on that outside edge. It's not gonna end up anywhere else for us. Now, another thing I see people having trouble with, um, and so maybe people are doing it differently than I am. I'm not sure. I've seen I've seen videos, I've seen TikToks of people throwing something like a curveball, ends up looking like one of these right there, right? It ends up looking like one of that. You, and it's not it's not a good situation right even if the timing's good it ends up looking like one of those right there i've seen a lot of that so one thing that i've been doing that's been helping me a lot is so for a curveball here obviously that first little motion down we don't have anything to work with but from that point i'm just using that edge of the controller 
I was slow on that front because I wanted to show, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling down right, and we're using the edge of the controller, right? I'm just pulling that as far down as it can, and the edge of the controller is giving me the perfect line I need to run on, right? So if we're running a curveball, right, I'm slowly bringing it down to there, and then I'm running the edge of the controller. Again, too slow. Let's do it normal here. Got a curveball here. Run it down. Edge of the controller, 100% accurate, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not some guru that's perfectly aligning that. It's just straight up edge of the controller. I'm pulling that down as far as I can. Same could be said for a change up, right? As far as I can push that over on that line, I'm doing that right there. You know what I mean? And that, that gives you that perfect line to follow. Just, that's just the edge of the controller right there. Perfect line to follow. Pretty much almost a perfect pitch right there. So that's going to help you get a lot higher accuracy number. So really, then it comes down to the point where the only thing you have to get down is the pacing, right? Because the accuracy itself of following the line becomes really easy. Now all you got to learn is the pace. You've kind of taken away one aspect of it. Makes it a lot easier at that point. Of course, we don't have that um, on something like a fastball, but overall fastball is pretty easy pitch in general so overall that's really what i've been doing it's it's understanding that perfect accuracy region because we want to make sure that we're putting pitches in a location that's going to be good for us right so even if we do miss we're not going to miss bad it's understanding the pacing of it which i've seen a lot of people mess up on just like that right there under i messed up my pacing my timing everything fell apart but that pacing and timing is huge you want to get that down once you get that down Everything else will come right there. We get the pacing down. We get the timing down. We throw a perfect pitch. It ended up being a ball, but that was a beautiful pitch. That curveball that just kind of snuck inside there. If it's not a computer player, you're probably getting someone to swing at that pitch right there, right? So, boom. Back-to-back -back perfect pitches. We're practicing here on All-Star, so it's not Hall of Fame or anything of that nature, but we're not just sitting here on veteran or anything of that. So, not easy to sit here and dot up pitches by any stretch of the matter, right? So, understanding that pacing understanding the timing are essential getting that timing down at the end now one thing i will say is once you get with some pitchers and you get into the stretch um some people have found it easier out of the stretch because you're able to move the this bar quicker you're able to go that quicker out of the stretch or throwing with a slide step or anything like that some people have found it harder but that is one thing to understand is that that pacing is going to be different with every single pitcher right because it's based off of their wind up Right, so quicker wind up pitcher, you're gonna have to be going quicker. You know, you're gonna have to be doing one of those and really going quick with it. Obviously, with Degrom out of the out of the wind up, he's a bit slower. But that is one thing to understand is is those other guys, they are gonna be a bit quicker. You may find that easier. You may find that more difficult. Um, okay, shoot, go. That's cool, bro. <laughs> one thing, but that kind of you know. At that point, if you find pitchers that you really got down, you're smooth with, you have their timing down, you have everything else, you can rock with those guys. So that's going to add a lot of different aspects to choosing a pitcher. You got to choose guys that you're comfortable with and that you can throw perfect, perfect pitches with just like that right there. So that does do it for today's video. Pinpoint pitching. That's what I know. That's what I've been doing. I hope this helps better explain things and understand how to go about attacking pinpoint pitching and using it to uh you know be successful and to your advantage if you enjoyed this video definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe and let me know down in the comment section below are you liking pinpoint pitching have you been using it if you have any questions about it hit me up we can make it happen as always we do stream live on twitch as well link down in the description below to that bad boy if you need help with pinpoint pitching i'm using nothing but pinpoint this year so you can follow along live with what I'm doing, seeing how I'm pitching in real time, uh, seeing the mistakes I made, seeing the great pitches I made. We had a point yesterday we threw like six perfect, perfect pitches in a row. So I think I'm getting the, the vibe of it down a little bit, and hopefully this translates into more, more success in online play. Until next time, though, I'll catch y'all around.